the snake in the Garden of Eden. He was more subtle than any other creature. Human cells, human matter. This should not be going inside another human being. There is no way I'm allowing human matter in my body. That's not going to happen. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that you abstain from things sacrificed to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication. If you keep yourselves free from such things, you will do well. Hello friends, it's another amazing day in the Lord Jesus. When you have Yeshua, every day is valuable. Today, I want to talk to you about a biblical perspective of the vax. I decided to speak on this because I was studying the book of Acts. And these particular scriptures kept hearkening my attention. And I believe I should share it with you. I think it will be of benefit to you. In the book of Acts, we see that Peter had received a message from the Lord that his grace would be extended to the Gentiles as well. So it was no longer confined to the Jews. Then the message of the gospel is being preached far and wide to Jews and Gentiles alike. But there is a conflict because of the fact that some of the Jews, they were so used to traditional ways that the keeping of the law in certain respects, such as in circumcision, was such a part of their culture. They believed that even the Gentiles, in order to be saved, must also get circumcised. And this conflict kept coming up until it had to be addressed at the Jerusalem Council. And you'll see that in Acts 15, that Peter speaks up because he's the one who received the vision from the Lord that nothing therefore is unclean to those who come to the Lord Jesus. Now let me explain why this connects with the vax. By the way, I'm going to use the word vax because on YouTube I cannot use certain words or this video will get pulled down. So when I say vax, you know what I'm referring to. Peter and Paul and the rest of the disciples have to teach the people that the law is fulfilled in Jesus. You don't have to keep these laws of circumcision because if you keep one law, that means you have to keep all the laws. And the grace of God means that by faith you come to the Lord Jesus. So they're teaching them that they're free of the old practice of keeping the law, that this heavy yoke is no longer upon them. However, they do say that there are certain burdens that we will put upon you, certain things that are necessary. Now remember, this is in the book of Acts. It's new covenant. It's after the resurrection of Jesus. And this is what they were helping the people understand. I'm going to read it out to you in Acts 15. To the brethren who are of the Gentiles in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia, greetings. Since we have heard that some who went out from us have troubled you in words, unsettling your souls, saying you must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good to us, being assembled with one accord to send chosen men to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have therefore sent Judas and Silas, who will also report the same things by word of mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that you abstain from things offered as idols, from blood, from things strangled, and from sexual immorality. If you keep yourselves from these, 
you will do well. I want to bring your attention to the line to keep yourself from things strangled. The term things that had been strangled refers to anything that has been cruelly killed or murdered. This is why Jewish dietary laws call for kosher meat. Animals are treated humanely. They are healthy and uninjured before being killed with the least amount of suffering. And we are called to have that same respect for life, that we do not partake of any meat or remains of a living being that was cruelly treated. When it comes to the consumption of meat, animals that were strangled were not to be eaten. And neither could you consume blood because in the Old Testament, the Lord says, refrain from blood because the life is in the blood. The only blood you want to consume is the blood of Yeshua through communion. They were giving this advice to the people that though you are free of the keeping of the law as of old, however, do maintain these burdens, being free of sexual immorality, free from meat sacrificed to idols, meat that is strangled, free from consuming blood. Now, how this ties into the vax is that well, it's been made clear that in the development of the co-vax, fetal cells from aborted fetal cells are used. Companies such as Johnson & Johnson stating that, yes, these fetal cell lines are used. Now, they argue that it is not human flesh. However, these fetal cell lines are from an aborted fetus. Now, the whole process of abortion is cruel. That baby in the womb is a living being. It is being treated cruelly. It's being killed cruelly. One should not have any association with the matter that comes forth from that. So you don't want to ingest it in any way, whether it is the actual fetus or whether it's cell lines that come from it. You don't want to take it into your body and the apostles urge the people you will do well to refrain from this and this also applies to the consumption of meat wherever possible you want to look and see that the meat that you're taking in is from farms where animals are not being treated cruelly so you're looking for grass-fed meats you're going to look for companies that have a good reputation i know that when you go out to eat in restaurants you can't know for sure what's in the food but as much as possible if you want to keep your diet biblical when you purchase meat from the grocery store get the organic the grass-fed meat now let's get back to the vax and the fact that there's a connection between human fetal cells did you know that in the Old Testament, that one of the consequences for wickedness was a curse that would lead to cannibalism? So ingesting human matter in any way is linked with a curse. Ezekiel 5, 9-10 And I will do among you what I have never done, and the like of which I will never do again, because of all your abominations. Therefore, fathers shall eat their sons in your midst, and sons shall eat their fathers. And I will execute judgments among you, and all of you who remain, I will scatter to all the winds. When you take in human matter, you are basically opening the door to curses because the two are linked. It's bad enough to take in matter from animals that have been cruelly treated, what more? Human cells, human matter. This should not be going inside another human being. It is detestable to the Lord. We see in Genesis 9 that the Lord says, whoever sheds human blood by humans, their blood will be shed. Cannibalism is a pagan practice. 
It is also increasingly practiced among Satan worshippers. Killing another human being, consuming human matter, consuming animal blood, human blood, is an abomination to the Lord. And this is one very sneaky strategy that the enemy has used to introduce human matter into the body, opening the door for curses. Because the enemy hates mankind, and he will use every trick in the book. And it will be so subtle. Remember, the snake in the Garden of Eden, he was more subtle than any other creature. And they say that, oh, it, these are just cell lines derived from fetal cells. It's not human meat. It's human matter. It's derived from a fetus. There is no way I'm allowing human matter in my body. That's not going to happen. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not saying you shouldn't have it or you should have it because you have to make that decision. All I'm saying is I will certainly not have the vax. And I'm giving you biblical scriptures that reveal why this is more significant than you may realize. Also in the vax is a strain of co. You can read the word here. This is what I'm referring to. So that strain is in the vax. And it is synthetic. Now, just logically, you don't put anything that's synthetic in an organic body. If you take something that's inorganic and put it in an organic vessel, that is a seed that has been introduced to disrupt the functioning of that body. So just logically, without even having to do investigation or research, it makes sense. Why put something synthetic in your body? Lastly, I want to say this, that I do not believe that the vax of today is the mark of the beast. But I do believe it is a precursor to the mark of the beast. Because the enemy always prepares the ground. He is programming. He uses training and programming to prep the people to become fearful, to bow to worldly authority over heavenly authority. And those people who refrain from listening to the leading of the Holy Spirit, who gave into fear, who took the vax simply out of a desire for convenience, to travel, to move, those people are going to be the ones who are more easily programmed to take the mark of the beast. It's just a reality. And those who do not cave in to this vax have more strength in them to resist the enemy. And they are able to go through the fires. They don't cave so easily. And this is why it's important. Always follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. If you're going to deal with a multitude of inconveniences, so be it. But you have gained so much more in your walk in Christ. You become stronger, more resolute. You don't give in when you're tested. What happens if you've taken the vax and you're regretting it? Well, I want to say this. Don't fall into condemnation. Because everyone makes mistakes in their walk in Christ, but you want to learn from the mistake. You don't want to be overcome with guilt and condemnation. Allow the Holy Spirit to convict you, repent, and then be free of it. And then you learn from it. In fact, it could make you more resolute and it could make you stronger because of the fact that you've learned a hard lesson and now. You will not cave in to an agenda that is presented to you in the future. So with all things, the great thing about being in the Lord Jesus is that as long as we're quick to repent and get back up, every incident can be to your favor. So let it strengthen you. Don't let it fill you with condemnation. That's all I have for you today. I hope this was a blessing to you. Leave me a comment. Love you. Shalom. I'll see you next time. Yeshua is Lord.